January 1968. The opening salvos of the most widely debated battle of the Vietnam War. The communist target is an American base called Khe San. The defenders are told to dig in. There will be no retreat. As the battle for Khe San begins, war explodes in every South Vietnamese city. Tet, the Vietnamese New Year holiday, becomes a spectacular and bloody offensive. In America, television brings home unprecedented war scenes and brings doubt. By January 68, two and a half years after American ground troops went to Vietnam, U.S. forces number almost half a million. Aggressive search and destroy operations have pushed North Vietnamese forces back into border sanctuaries. American field commanders insist their tactics are winning the war. The public is told that the worst is over. But not everyone believes. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara is turning against the war. To replace McNamara, President Lyndon Johnson names a new defense secretary, Clark Clifford. Clifford is a Washington lawyer, a close Johnson associate who at first fully supports the war policy. In 1967, the reports coming back from Vietnam was that we were finally prevailing. The expression that was being used was that parties could see the light at the end of the tunnel. And returning visitors would comment on when we might be able to get our men back from Vietnam. There was quite a lot of euphoria by the end of 1967. It looked like we were ultimately prevailing and we were nearing the end of this sorry, sorry enterprise. But in July 67, the North Vietnamese decide on a new strategy. The communist military commander, General Bo Nguyen Jep, prepares to attack South Vietnam cities. His objective, to destroy government structure and American confidence. The switch to an open offensive is a huge risk, and the North Vietnamese proceeded with a peace bid and with the dramatic siege, Khe San. December 1967, a large North Vietnamese buildup is observed in the hills around Khe San. According to American intelligence, the communist battle plan is to surround, then overwhelm the position. The target, an airstrip on a small plateau, Khe San, until now a little known name in America's three years of combat involvement. Khe San is located in the remote northwest corner where South Vietnam borders Laos and North Vietnam. To hold Khe San, its defenders must control several nearby hills. Key hills like 861 and 881 were held by Marines after intensive combat seven months earlier. Now these same hills will be pivotal throughout the coming battle. In command, a World War II veteran, Marine Colonel David E. Lowndes, 
he understands the critical importance to both sides of owning the high ground. Their plan to uh, take the hills was what I would have done. In other words, if I were on the other side of the fence and, and my commander said to me, I want that airstrip, you take it, then my first step would be to get you off the hills, to take away your eyes. Since the mid-1960s, search and destroy operations have been mounted in this northern sector. Khe San is a forward patrol base attempting to block North Vietnamese infiltration routes. The tactics and terrain are the choice of General William Westmoreland. Uh, I was influenced by a desire to fight the enemy away from the populated area. If we could fight them in the hinterlands there, in the, the rugged, uh, hilly and mountainous area, along the Laos border, uh, our fires wouldn't be inhibited by the proximity of civilians. But now, 3,500 Marines are pinned inside their own barbed wire. They're encircled and outnumbered at least four to one. An operational base becomes a fortress besieged. <laughs> 